and um, the Martin Luther King Center and Mr. Soon to be Dr. Jamar, Jamal McDaniel oh and the program for African American and Africana studies featuring our affiliate and English professor, Dr. Kamara Ewing. Um, this series is designed to uh, discuss um, for, as a partnership between students, faculty, and staff, and to bring light to some of the research that's actually happening in African and American and Africana studies. Luckily, uh, Dr. Ewing is a film scholar and her talk is entitled African Voices Within uh, the Global South, Nollywood in the Black Atlantic. Excuse me one moment. You're already recording, Jamal? Yes? Okay, so please ship me that file when it's over because I don't think I can record and you can record at the same time. All right, um, Dr. Ewing, please take it away. All right, thank you everyone for being here. Thank you for uh, allowing me to share my book project. I am very grateful and I look forward to hearing everyone's comments. All right, so I'm gonna just begin. So this project began in Guyana while I was there. I uh, was there for a month and noticed how Indian Guyanese were observing how Bollywood or Indian cultural productions reflected their reality in the same way I noticed that Afro uh, Guyanese were looking towards Nollywood, looking towards the United States and Jamaica, also trying to understand what did it mean to be Guyanese. So I was curious whether or not I could find Nollywood in Latin America and whether or not I could find it in a Spanish or Portuguese speaking country. And luckily a few years later, I was able to find so. Uh, that is basically the beginning of the project. I will give you an overview for what I am going to present on today. All right, starting in Brazil. All right, so Nigeria and Brazil are two countries represented of dynamic cultural powerhouses within the global south. The Nigerian movie industry, Nollywood, is the largest producer of contemporary African cultural productions in the world. Brazil has the largest African population outside of Nigeria, and it is home to a large portion of practitioners of Yoruba religion, particularly in Salvador da Bahia. Recent Brazilian affirmative action policies mandate the implementation of legislation that seeks to disseminate awareness of education in the history and culture of African and Afro-Brazilians within Brazil. The cultural landscape of Brazil is an ideal <laughs> ground for exploring both new and old African diasporas in the region. Since the early 1900s, uh, dependence on the United States film industry has left little room for Brazilian representation in, in film and even less for Afro-Brazilian representation in film. That is the binaries of a European cultural worldview uh, that consisting of mostly civilized or modern life and society is juxtaposed with the third world uncivilized and unmodern black and African citizen immigrant worldview. Media, ha media as a whole and as, uh, social media specifically are valuable resources that begin to counter the bias inherent in a predominantly European cultural worldview by providing spaces that can discount these hegemonic perspectives on world societies. In fact, numerous and frequent protests take place in Brazil that parallel other global events that seek to counter social, economic, and or racial injustices, uh, while bringing attention to the importance of global cultural contributions to society made by people of color. One such example uh, is how of media resist resistance movements uh, in Brazil is the uh, recent um, murder of Afro-Brazilian political activist uh, Marielle Franco. Franco. Uh, her life was savagely taken for speaking the truth about the plight of Afro-Brazilian inequalities in Rio de Janeiro in 2018. So this research uh, project intersects the Afro-escapism and, and the heavy realities of social political strife of being a part of the African diaspora. So Nollywood uh, as one of the largest cultural producers in the global south, unintentionally 
uh, counter, uh, counteracts the Eurocentric hegemonic stance within Western media. This presentation examines Nollywood in Brazil through reactions of audiences who examine the contemporary contiguities of global South social oppression of Africans in the diaspora. Audience members do this by using media as a catalyst to describe the ongoing systematic struggle for democratic equality of Africans, Blacks, women, and immigrants living in Brazil. The research draws upon uh, Krings and Okome's global Nollywood thesis, whereby the authors argue that Nollywood's appeal in the world uh, beyond Nigerian borders is threefold. Its resonance with popular Black uh, diasporic uh, experiences, its capacity to raise Pan-African consciousness, and its provision as a model for cultural productions in the localized diaspora domains that it engages. I apply this thesis to capture the Africana narratives within both the new and old African diaspora communities in Salvador da Bahia and Sao Paulo. Uh, this aim, uh, the aim is to understand whether a global South cinematic powerhouse known as Nollywood can assist in reversing the underrepresentation of diverse black characters within Brazilian mainstream media. All right. Here's some of my research questions. And just in order to actually contextualize Nollywood, I think it's important to look at Hollywood, understand how many films are produced a year, um, an average around 800 within eight months with a budget of 60 million and an annual revenue of 9.6 billion. In contrast, uh, Bollywood produces around 1,000 films per year within 40 days with a $500,000 budget and a revenue of 2.2 billion. And Nollywood produces, and these numbers definitely go from 1,400 to 2,300 um, and changes every day. Uh, so the production time is normally within 25 days with an average budget of 40,000 and an annual revenue of uh, 540 million. So that kind of just gives you an idea of what uh, Nollywood or how Nollywood is um, understood within world and particularly within cinema. All right, so post-colonial scholars seek to uh, capture the limited voices of oppressed individuals within historical narratives of contemporary uh, ide uh, ideology and ideoscapes. Um, the examination of colonial studies and post-colonial studies assist individuals in understanding diverse ways resistance occurs through previous uh, literature and visual images, including now diverse forms of media. While the technological apparatus may change, the ideology remains uh, to shape and create identity and culture in the nation. Um, anthropologist Brian Larkins explains, quote, media are ingredient, key ingredients in popular life, in everyday pleasures and effective engagements that make up the urban experience everywhere, unquote. The exploration of cultural transmittance of Nollywood movies in Brazil extends to explore similarities and differences within the global south. Uh, globalization examines the transnational flows that connect the world in multifaceted ways. African representation and that of the African diaspora resemble each other within the global south. The connection between exploitation and subjugation that once existed in the colonial world persists in different ways in the contemporary neoliberal world. In Latin America, the legacy of slavery and disenfranchisement, social, economic, and political, tends to create diverse markets within globalization. The cultural global flows model um, by apodorized ap scapes or fields is an interesting way to examine Nollywood in Brazil uh, to understand it as a means to create a conversation about and thoughtfully consider contemporary issues of Africana voices within Brazil by utilizing Nollywood as a catalyst. The theory of scapes describes uh, Nollywood's uh, distribution, production, and consumption, and initiates a conversation about Africana representation and its state of being within Brazil. All right, so Nollywood has been successful in the, the West, the East, and South Africa. For example, in Kenya, many films were criticized for changing uh, Kenyan culture. Uh, such that many began to purchase and wear more Nigerian clothes styles uh, than Kenyan clothing styles. Similarly, in Tanzania and the Congo, Nollywood films are dubbed and the movies describe local politics. Many Nigerian productions uh, became popular through cultural adaptations within different countries. 
Nollywood has inspired numerous countries to create their own industries and replicate uh, by replicating the Nollywood formula. Movies produced by these industries are designed to tell these countries sto uh, cultural stories while simultaneously creating revenue within diverse regions. Matea Kring, uh, Krings and Okona Okonome Okome celebrate Nollywood by illustrating how the Nigerian cultural productions have greatly influenced many African countries. Third cinema post-colonial scholars argue that once um, more serious issues are handled within the films, besides the local culture and social concerns within the communities, Nollywood's influence will be seen as an increase as inclusion, increasingly important. Similarly, Nollywood scholars Joyti Mistri and Joydash uh, Elipin concur that, quote, the Pan-African transportability is, a, is the challenge for the Nollywood phenomena. It is, it must find a way to operate within a paradigm that is influential on multiple levels as an art form, uh, a creative expression, as a political tool and as a commodity, unquote. Uh, while this may be true for most Nollywood films, Within international film screenings, curators often aim to show films that include important political messages, as well as those that solely contain social and cultural messages. Uh, Nollywood co-productions have increased within the diaspora. And so we can see that here, uh, which creates different uh, aesthetics. Although most Nollywood movies have lower cultural production quality, the movies illustrate the aspirations and the social cultural expectations of some Nigerians. The audience must have patience to watch uh, Nigerian movies. But after the first 15 minutes, as one audience member suggested, the audience will be able to delve into the narration and storyline. Thus, Nigerian homeland experience will differ from that of Brazilian audiences. Though, uh, who may have an interest in Africa for personal or educational reason, region, reasons. Uh, the way that many Pan-Africanists may view Nollywood in general uh, will counter the creation of uh, African identity in the diaspora writing. My research examines the Pan-African uh, diaspora circulation of Nollywood phenomena and elucidates the potential harm and benefits of Nollywood reception abroad. All right.